Hey Gacha Gamers, Genshin haters, and Honkai Star Rail appreciators, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about all the reasons why you might want to be skipping on Dragon Danny's banner if you're really on the fence about it. Let me give a slight disclaimer here. Summon for you want to summon for? I don't need you in the comment section telling me, D -d -d this is not meta, meta doesn't matter. Yes, wife over meta, husbando over meta, summon for you want to summon for. If you know you're going to summon for Danny, summon for Danny, get the fuck out of my video. Just kidding. Love you guys. Anyways, the first things first, I kind of want to briefly just go over over his banner and his character kit as, as a whole and just give my general thoughts on it before talking about all the things I see wrong with it or maybe the reasons why not the summon right so overall I think Dragon Danny is going to be an absolutely massive DPS unit uh, I mean, he's going to help your account out a lot. I think the banner could have been a bit better. Not to say the characters on the banner are bad. They're just all free-to-play characters already. So you will be getting these characters for free in the game as you beat it. Yukong completely for free after you beat the story that's currently in the game. You'll also be getting Asta for free at the very beginning of the game. And then, of course, you get March 7th for free as well at the beginning of the game. So, I mean, all of these are completely free-to-play. And I don't think this banner really completes him. I don't think this banner really makes a team for him him i guess yukong could be really good for him giving the extra imaginary boost like don't get me wrong all these characters can be used for him and are pretty good for him but overall i just don't think that they provide him with a full team and is really as free to play friendly as someone like uh fushuan's banner for example right which we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video but let's first quickly go over his kit to get a better understanding of my reasonings on why you would want to skip right so his skill is going to be enhancing his basic attack every single time you use it you can use it up to three times per turn which means you use three skill points per turn but with every increase of this skill or every use of this skill in that turn is going to be giving you a better enhanced basic attack going from lotus to transcendence to divine spear to full grant leap and each of these enhanced basic attacks the more you go up the more hits per action you get which means the more hits on an enemy's weakness you would get and also on top of this you're going to be increasing his damage as well because with his talent his damage increases with the amount of hits per action he actually gains as well and then finally his ultimate move will be attacking one enemy hitting adjacent enemies and be giving him two stats stacks of his little free skill point thingy which basically gives him two free skill points right so you're not having to use three skill points every turn it's kind of refundable and it's super super good for him to kind of make him more synergistic with the team right so with the baseline out of the way i'm gonna go ahead and start with some of my reasons on why you might want to skip danny first of all he's a dps character right uh dps characters come out so so frequently not even going to be talking about power creep here but they just come out so consistently i'm assuming most players probably have plenty of DPS is already right just take a look at your account right now how many DPS do you have in comparison to like support units or something else on your account right so this could be a reason for you to skip don't get me wrong I think he's really really good but on the other hand do you really need another DPS on your team or should you be going for someone like Fushuan or Fushuan's banner we'll talk about that in a minute here but but overall just like look where you're at with MOC right are you beating MOC are you able to clear MOC like are you getting hard stuck MOC because your team's dying a, a ton then this might be a reason to skip Dragon Daniel right it's just not very good value overall for most players accounts because most most players have a ton of DPSs on the account and they don't have many supports on their account. And that kind of transitions us into our second reason of why you would want to skip his banner. Let's just take a look at his banner in comparison to someone like Fushuan's banner, right? Okay, so first of all, Fushuan's banner is going to have Lynx, Hook, and Pela. So on this banner, you have two sustain units. You also have a DPS and a debuffer on this team. You could use this whole banner to make a team. If a free-to-play player summons on this banner, you could literally make a whole team around this. And you would really only have to swap off Hook if you need a different elemental typing to deal damage, right? You don't have to use Hook, but she is really, I think, probably the best fire DPS in the game right now that you could even have. So having Hook will be absolutely amazing not to mention all these characters are not free to play characters at all meaning you can't get them for free in the story one bit which is also really nice to see that means you're going to be able to pick up characters you normally wouldn't be able to pick up because they're not free to play you get them all from the banner itself and it just adds a lot of value like that because overall having a character is better than having like an e1 of a character right because the character adds most of the value and then idolon just add on top of that value because realistically the characters that are free to play right the the four stars that are free to play you'll eventually get them all 5a anyways right because they just give them out for free or you'll just get them through summoning right uh and it's a little bit harder to do that with these current four stars that are on fu Shuan's banner going back to the danny banner his four stars are not bad right it has yukong austin march 7th i think yukong
Wong is an alright support unit. Uh, she's very, very niche unless you have her E6, which you have to go to E6 to make her really, really, really good. Not to say I don't think she'll work well with Danny. I just think it's going to be a bit harder to use because you have to time her skills up so much and build her. Uh, you have to build her up like quite a bit to actually use her or make her official on the team, right? March 7th. Uh, March 7th is a good tank. Like, she's, she's a good tank, but... There are better things in the game, right? I'm not going to say that March 7th is super bad because she has a cleanse, she has a shield, she can draw aggro away, but at the end of the day, she there are better units. There are a lot better units than her. I think just about every tank or support unit in the game is better than March 7th. Uh, and I mean, that's not shitting on March 7th because she's good, right? But, but realistically, she's probably the worst out of all the sustained characters in the game, and that's just my opinion on that. Finally, Asta. Asta, I think, is just the best free-to-play unit you have. Any duplicates you get for Asta is going to immensely help your account out. Her Eidolons are just cracked, stupid, insane. They basically allow you to keep your attack buff up at all times and also your speed buff. This is going to be really important for Dragon Danny, especially the attack. Can't really talk about that right now because leaks, you know? Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, right, I think this banner is decent, but I do think that Fushuan's banner is going to be a lot better for free-to-play players overall. I think you'll get a lot more out of that banner than you will for Dragon Danny's banner, because you can really go and throw, you know, Fushuan in just about any team. You can throw Lynx in just about any team. You can throw Pela in just about any team. You can't throw a DPS in just about every team. Because at the end of the day, you can't brute force everything, right? You can't go to MOC stage 10 and brute force it without having elemental typings and breaking the enemy shield. That's just really not going to work unless you're absolutely well out of your mind, right? So, talking about my final reason on why you might want to skip Dragon Daniel's banner. Let's talk about 1.4 a little bit. 1.4 is going to be introducing two new characters to the game, or my bad, three new characters to the game. The one four star being Guinevere, and also the two five stars being Jing Liu, which is an ice destruction type character. And also we're getting Topaz and Umi, which is a fire hunt type character. I mean, you could always, there, there are obviously two DPSs here, right? We're getting so many DPSs. So if you don't need Dragon Danny, right? Say you have a welt on your account. You could run DPS Welt for that role, right? You could get Welt guaranteed after 300 summons for the standard gacha. Whereas I think it's a lot harder to fi fill in that fire DPS role because let's be honest, we ain't, we ain't using Himiko as a fire DPS, right? If you get Topaz and Numbi, that's going to be a direct replacement for Hook, right? So, I mean, that's another option you could run there. Uh, Jing Liu is an ice DPS. If you don't have Yangqing, you could run that, right? Like... There are just so many options in the game, right? I'm not saying Yangqing, but I think Yangqing is really, really good and a pretty solid character, right? But overall, you get what I mean. I, I think you could save for this if you have a welt, right? Uh, this is just in the case that you have a welt or even an E6 Yukong already. Uh, you could just run her as a DPS and you really don't need him. But that's the main thing, right? Is most people don't need this many DPSs on their account. And I know where you guys are coming from. You're like me probably. And you know, big number looks cool and big number do big damage. And that is always pog, right? Whereas in a turn-based game, yeah, very cool. Uh, but if you're not one cycling, that damage doesn't really mean anything if your whole team is dying and you can't beat the content and you're not maximizing the stellar jades you're getting per month to summon four more DPS characters to get that big number, right? So at the end of the day, that's really my reasons on why you shouldn't be summoning for Dragon Danny. Tell me what your thoughts are on the comments below. Like I said, summon for who you want to summon for. I'm just giving my reasons on why you might want to skip Dragon Daniel. We already have a guide out on the channel if you are going to be summoning for Dragon Daniel. Basically going over everything you need. Best artifacts for him, best light cones to level up for him, everything like that. If you haven't watched that video already, please subscribe to the channel and go watch that. Uh, but yeah, that's really going to do it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and join the Discord because we will be doing a Fu Shuan giveaway. Yay, Pugger uh, We'll probably be putting that giveaway up in about two weeks. But to actually enter and for that you will be needing to join the discord and subscribe to the youtube channel anyways guys that's gonna do it hope you guys enjoyed this little short video today and yep i'll see you in the next one later Bye bye